I've covered some of the most unique skyscrapers that have come help define the skyline of New York. But today, I'd like to take you to my hometown of Melbourne, which has been transforming over the last 10 to 15 years, with the addition of many unique towers. A lot of these towers have actually been pure residential construction, with actually two thirds of the skyscrapers in the Melbourne skyline being for residential purposes. The unique form of Australia 108 will become iconic and defining Melbourne's skyline. And it actually takes a couple of titles as Melbourne's tallest tower, the tallest residential apartment in the Southern Hemisphere, and its penthouse selling for $25 million at the time became Melbourne's most expensive apartment. It just fell short of being Australia's tallest tower, being pipped at the post by Q1 on the Gold Coast. And it was only pipped at the post by the spire that was put on top of Q1. So if you're talking about actual constructed floor levels, a livable space, Australia 108 still holds this title. When first planning went in for Australia 108, it was set to be the tallest tower in Australia and was to be a mixed use development, combining both hotels and residential apartments with a proposed height of 388 meters and 108 stories, hence the name Australia 108. However, after getting planning, its planning approval was revoked when it was later found that it would restrict flight paths from Melbourne airport. This is where the new redesign came in to have the form that we see today. It was purely changed into a residential tower and had a reduced height of 317 meters and only 100 stories, and but still retained the name Australia 108. The design of Australia 108 had to overcome many issues, and the first being the footings. You see, where Australia 108 is located, it's on an area called South Bank, that is actually an old marshland as it's at the end of the Yarra River before it actually connects to the bay. The whole geologic formation that it's founded on is called Cood Island Silt. Cood Island Silt is a really poor founding material and is a really low bearing capacity. And even for small residential apartments, they still need to be founded on some sort of pile foundation, typically screw piles. To overcome this, they had to design an extensive footing system, combining piles with sizes of up to 2.1 meters. These piles were then drilled into the ground about 46 to 47 meters to be founded on the bedrock beneath. Find this content into Australia 108 enjoyable. Much like one of Australia's mascots, don't forget to hop onto that like button. Not only does it help me out, but it also gives me guidance on what type of content to create for you. Now let's keep learning about the engineering behind this masterpiece. The main lateral system of Australia 108 is made up of a central core with a series of outriggers and mega columns. At the base of the tower, the primary structural core is around one meter thick and is 100 MPA up to about level 15. Standard high strength concrete typically only reaches about 80 MPA. So 100 is really pushing the boundaries of strength. Although we have seen mixes recently of up to 120 MPA. The reason behind using such a high strength concrete, it allows you to limit the structural size of your structural elements by reducing the thickness and increasing the saleable floor space. Now, on these taller buildings, it's not necessarily just for strength, but also to control deflection. You see, the higher your concrete strength is, the higher the Young's modulus of the structure is. So you see, the calculation of stiffness really has two components. It has that second moment of inertia, so how big the structure is, but how stiff it is. And then your Young's modulus is really a ratio of the stiffness of the material. To further stiffen up the structure, the building also has a series of discrete outriggers located between the 42nd and 43rd floors, and also located between the 68th and 70th floors. These outriggers significantly stiffen up the structure in these locations to help bring back the deflections and pull out some of the stresses. And how they do this is by pulling the perimeter of the stiffness to the outer edges of the building. It's much like a skier when he goes down the hill, he puts his arm out to stabilize himself. The same thing happens with these outriggers. As they're located on the outer perimeters, they significantly stiffen up the building. The primary lateral governing force on Australia 108 will be wind. And to help reduce the wind load on our structure, they've specifically formed it up such that it cuts through the air more cleanly. And they've done this by forming big large radius corners, stepping it in and having some curved edges. This helps disrupt the eddies that would form in behind the tower that cause damaging effects. Now it's not necessarily just the wind load that's forming on one side that impacts the building, but it's the eddies behind it that can cause more damaging effects on our tower. 
So by specifically forming it up this way, they can significantly reduce the impact that wind has on our design. In addition to this, they also have a tune mass dampener located on the 98th floor. With the addition of this tune column dampener, it's typically only there for human comfort and to help decelerate the building so you don't feel the sways and the accelerations of the tower under even a light or even mildly strong wind. You see, all large towers sway to some extent, but if you typically don't feel that sway due to the addition of a tune mass dampener, Without a doubt, the most unique feature of Australia 108 is that starburst, and that required some engineering behind it to make it work. You see, it extends over three stories and cantilevers up to six meters beyond the floor plate, so it covers the 69th, 70th, and 71st floors. The 69th floor is the outrigger floor, and which allows it to be cantilevered out beyond the floor plate and the floors above to be built. Due to the complexity of the starburst, they were concerned that it would slow down construction. So they designed it in such a way that they keep building up as they cantilevered the complex sections of the starburst out. See, the bottom 69th floor was actually built out of concrete and the remainder of the starburst above was constructed out of steel trusses. You see, this has two benefits. First, it has a great reduction in weight over a concrete structure, but also allows it to be fabricated offsite before being lifted into place. Australia 108 has not been without its issues. You see, in Melbourne currently, we're suffering from something that's known as the Creaky Tower Syndrome. And 108 has actually been affected by this. And when you hear these sounds, especially as a non-engineer, it might be quite terrifying. However, it's not really a structural issue. See, this creaking is coming from the stud walls that either form up the rooms or the party walls between apartments. These are constructed of non-structural steel studs that are connected to the floor above and below with a top and bottom plate. And when the building sways, the floor plates that they're connected to move slightly differential to each other. And this is what's causing the creaking sound. If you're interested in supporting the channel further, I actually have links to my Patreon in the below description. So what does it get you? Get some more access to me, some behind the scene content, and some future members only Q and A's. I hope to see you over there. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and ding that bell to get all updates. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.